like an escape room. <laughs> these bags. I need my own problem solved for how to open these plastic bags. 13 large eggs, yes, cage free. Looks like a lot of the good lemons were picked through, but ugly fruit is still good fruit. Produce doesn't have to be pretty to be good. I use citrus all the time in the kitchen for cooking and for cleaning. I love it so much, I wanna give it a big squeeze. Here's a nifty way to get more juice from your citrus. I have not been to the farmer's market in quite a while and I'm in need to restock on some snacks, so I'm gonna see what they have. Some local, cool, fun snacks, and of course the produce and everything else. Just don't wanna forget a reusable bag for the farmer's market. And I have so many, I don't know which one I want to use. Looking for citrus and garlic. Oh gosh. This is why I love the farmer's market. Like fresh tortillas? I mean, I feel like I need these. What? Blue corn, they've got blue corn ones. These limes are great. 50 cents, farm fresh limes. Good thing about the Southwest is like, citrus grows like crazy here. I feel like people have like lemons year round here. These juicers are a handy way to squeeze as much as you can out of those lemons and limes. But there's another kitchen device to help give you the most juice output. My good friend, Mikrowave. 20 seconds should do it. 20 to 30 seconds heating that up will get those juices flowing. Rock and roll to break up all the fibers inside. Ooh, it's already dripping out. Softer, easier to squeeze, and way more juice. This also can make it easier when you're hand juicing. These things are so difficult to open. Usually, I have my reusable produce bags, but I was caught off guard today. <laughs> he wasn't planning on going to the grocery store, but then ended up coming here. Some big lemons. Jeez, huge. There were huge lemons in the world's tiniest limes. These are baby limes. Itty bitty, so little and so round. The microwave is a great way to coax more juice out if your citrus is a little smaller or a little older. For smaller lemons and limes, you may need less time, like 15 to 20 seconds. Use caution, your lemon may be a little toasty. And don't throw these away, you can actually use them to clean your microwave, your sink, and other things too. Steam clean your microwave. Life is like a basket of citrus. You never know how much juice you're gonna get. What's your name? Wiley. Wiley and I are homies now. We got a play date set for the dog park later on this week. I found what I was looking for. Now do I have enough hands? Oh, they had baskets this whole time. Here I am carrying this, and look at these. Reusable baskets. This makes it way easy. Just need a cup holder on it for my coffee. That's how to do it. Now what else can I find here? Yeah, the salsa is so good. Well, it's homemade, and then like this elote dip, so good. This green one, so good. And then I like their spicy salsa. It's fresh. It's really good. I don't know where they are though. I guess I'll just chill here. Wait, oh, hello. Oh, and a cute puppy. I'm gonna get one of these. And then should I go hot or roasted garlic? I'm gonna go hot. Yeah. Roasted garlic sounds good, but I need some heat. The dude gave me a bonus salsa, cranberry peach. Mmm, I love fruit salsas. So that's gonna be super tasty. There are so many hacks out there for peeling garlic, so. Here's one more. Here's a trick to easily peel garlic. These garlics are huge too. What is happening in the world today? Huge lemons, huge garlics. These are little tiny guys. Especially when the garlic is fresh, that peel is so tight to the clove. The microwave can help loosen things up. For an average size bulb, you'll need about 20 seconds in the microwave. Not, not too hot. Just a few seconds, that little bit of steam inside there to help loosen things up. Garlic skins can get a little messy, so I like to do this on a paper towel or on a plate. Ooh, I can smell it. You may want these to cool slightly. Now it's the same peeling procedures, but that skin should be less sticky. All in one piece and not very sticky. Much easier cleanup. Look at this nice fresh garlic. Ooh, that's a good one can't have enough garlic in your life, right? You can also do this on individual cloves, just cut off the bottom first in a microwave safe bowl, and you may only need 10 to 15 seconds. Ooh, that one's really effortless. Super easy peel. Now this is a garlic clove. What am I supposed to do with this? Come on, garlic. When you think being a vampire would be cool, you realize an undead life without garlic is no life at all. These are nice tomatoes. Yes. I love green onions and I love these like really big wild green onions. So I'm just checking them out. I don't see radishes like this very often. These are so pretty. Makes me want to make a salad real bad. Apple pear jam? I just feel like that's a good name for a product. Plum butter. I respect the people who didn't go for the basket. They're just holding everything in their hands. 
mad respect. My favorite bread on planet Earth. This is why I come to the Wednesday market, not Saturday. You guys would be sold out by now on a Saturday. I think I'm gonna go with the croissant. It's great when it's fresh and fluffy, but after a few days, it can get tough and dry. Here's how to resuscitate some stale bread. This is an OG solution I thought we'd do a little refresher on. We'll just need a warm and toasty oven. If your oven has a warming setting, you can use that, or you can set that temp to about 300 degrees. This is where things get interesting. Run that crust under some flowing water, avoiding that exposed side. Nice and saturated on the outside crust. That water will create steam to help soften that loaf up and make it good as new. Check it after five to six minutes. You can go a little longer for a larger loaf. Set timer for six minutes. Six minutes counting down. Ooh, you speak. This one looks nice and soft. All the bread is so fresh. All these seasonings, garlic and herb. This bread section, everything's nice and soft. Ooh, this is uh, Italian loaf. I'm gonna get ya. You're not stale anymore, I'm gonna get ya. A little toasty on the outside, squishy in the middle. I think we've had success. This one's an oldie but a goodie. A trick that never goes stale. I think I could pull off that color. Oh. I think I need this. I wasn't expecting to buy a hat, but so I could get that hat for $45. I love the color of that hat, like that minty color. Or I can get this shirt. That shirt is so gorgeous. How cute is this? Oh, the pig one. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Tupac Kitty Cat Delf. This is like an art gallery meets clothing all in one. This is hilarious. Soups and broth get that layer of oil and fat on top. That can be a little tough to remove. Here's an easy remedy to skim off fat. The true method would be to refrigerate this overnight to get that fat layer solid. But we ain't got time for that. I cannot push this thing. It is literally a workout to maneuver. Okay. Looking for soup ingredients. A long journey for broth. Where is it usually? Maybe with pasta? Onward! I found it. These aisles are not labeled to my liking. Ta-da! Okay, let's see here. I do like the bone broths, you know. More minerals, more nutrients, no sugar added. It's good stuff. I'm gonna start with a bowl full of ice. These are beautiful cubes, little pyramids. That standard metal soup ladle and a bowl with some towels in it. I like to turn off the heat and let that pot cool slightly. Scoop some ice into the ladle and let it get nice and cold. Now gently run the ladle over the surface of the soup. The ladle's cold enough for those fat particles to solidify and stick. You just want the bottom of the ladle to skim the surface to pick up that fat and then wipe off the bottom to get all that extra oil out. And ladle by ladle, you'll get that fat to solidify. As that ice melts, you'll just want to grab a new scoop and drain off any excess water. While a little fat is great for flavor and richness, this will definitely help you remove all that excess. I don't know how I feel about this chili in a bag. It's kind of piquing my interest. Tomato soup in a bag I have less of an issue with. With garlic and onion, mmm. Tomato basil soup, yum yum. I love a good viral hack, and when it comes to separating egg yolks from egg whites, I've got a trick for you, actually two. Here's some cool tricks to separate egg yolks. So much competition for eggs these days. Free range, cage free. I think I like free range. Look at her hugging the chicken. These chickens are loved. Organic, cage free, no hormones added. Happy eggs. How does one tell that an egg is happy? Oh my God, look at the color of these. That's insane. They're blue. I've not seen grocery store eggs this color. These are so cool. I bet you they have a deep, rich yolk. I might pick these up just for fun. This is more like a magic trick, but you use garlic to pick up an egg yolk with your fingers. Rub that garlic all over your clean fingers. Here goes nothing. This isn't the most practical way to separate egg yolks, but it is fun, and I've had success with eggs with darker yolks. A little less messy and foolproof method is a water bottle. Oh. Cardboard, not as, not as stable as one thinks. Mm -hmm. Telling you, I cannot be trusted to go to the store. But it's gotta be empty. Okay, there we go. Ah, almost there. 
Not a world record, but I did it. Now it's just as easy as making a suction. This cracks me up, that's so fun to do. <laughs> and it really works. This is the place I got my knives sharpened and they're ready for pickup and I'm so excited to see how well they work now that they're professionally sharpened and ready to go. I wasn't aware there were so many choices when it comes to chef outfits. It's like scrubs, but for the culinary industry. So many options. This would be so delightful to cook in. <laughs> this feels like what you would like go on a run in. It's like athletic material. I really want one of these aprons, but I could not choose last time I was here. Brown's probably a good color. Blue? I just can't decide. Gray? Maybe they have mint green to match the hat I didn't get. So this is like the tool to make a smash burger. I wanna get like three more knives from here. I love the knife I got, but then I want like a good like big chef's knife and then a good cleaver on that. This cutting board too. This thing is incredible. I also, I think next time I come, I'm gonna pick up one of these cutting boards. This is like a real chef-y cutting board. Gosh, that's such a technical term. But good knives, you need a good cutting board. Oh, nice, look at this. Let me know if you have any questions or No worries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you too.